and I'm here to help you. And I'm your big sister, I'm your big brother, and I'm gonna carry you to that finish line. What do you wanna know? That's what we do every day, one-to-one -one peer mentoring. And what happens when a mom calls us and says, my four-year-old just got diagnosed with ALL leukemia. She's terrified, she's isolated. She needs to be matched to another mom that says, my 10-year-old girl beat that when she was four, six years ago, she's fine. And she grew her hair back, and she looks like a regular little kid, and she has friends, and she's okay. Our family speaks the language. We know a lot about it, we've done the research, we'll help you. So matching people so no one fights this disease on an island. And it doesn't have to be that way. Immerman Angels now is the largest network of cancer survivors in the world, over 4,000 cancer survivors, people in Israel, people in Scotland, people in Chile, join this network to be a mentor, to give back. And that's what it's all about, survivors giving back. Before I have Sammy say a couple quick words, are there any questions about what we do or why this is important? We work with everyone, by the way. We work with Livestrom, we work with the American Cancer Society, we work with Leukemia, Lymphoma Society, partnerships, collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. We all work together. We cross refer every day. Any questions? I'm really open, probably as you can tell. <laughs> but any questions about what we do or what we've learned? There's six of us full time in this nonprofit, please. Yes. Great question. How do we match people up? How does it work? We have a website. For example, we had an article in Le Figaro. Does anybody know Le Figaro? Anyone here? It's an article, it's a newspaper, second largest in France. And it came out about two weeks ago in France and about what we do, because we helped a woman in France. And people went online, we had 15 people that day, just in, in Paris area in France, and signed up online. That's the best way to do it. They go to immermanangels.org. They click on Get Support. They create a profile. My name is Johnny Emmerman. I'm 26. I've got testicular cancer. Here are the languages I speak. Here's my chemo's coming, and I'm alone. Submit. Within 24 hours, our staff of six, we're very small, but our staff of six right down the street here in Chicago will reach out, and through things like Skype, I mean, you can Skype to make phone calls. It's almost free. And then if you Skype to Skype, it's totally free. We reach out to France, talk to that person, cancer person to cancer person, figure out where the needs are, because it's like a fingerprint. No two people with cancer have the identical needs. You gotta meet them, you gotta talk to them, and that's all we do, is probe for that need and then make the match to one of our 4,000 plus survivors and say, you gotta know this guy, because this guy is your guy. And he knows the language, he's identical to you. You're married, guess what, he's married. You have two kids, guess what, he has two kids. You speak this language, guess what, he speaks that language. It's mirror matching. And then we check in a week later to make sure the match was successful. And if there is any open questions beyond that, we're there to help and make sure that they're connected all the way, that we've done our job. So that way we get 100% quality assurance. We check in and make sure that they're, they're helped. But that's the easiest way. And the same way for survivors to go online, the Everman Angels, and click give support and register as a survivor. We call you, we train you, we screen you, we get to know you, you're in the network. Because maybe next month, some guy in Topeka, Kansas gets leiomyosarcoma and no one's ever heard of this in his area. He's got to be able to call us and we got to help him. We got to motivate him, encourage him, inspire him. I don't want to go too long, but are there any other questions? Please. In, uh, in your darkest hour, yeah. your life is full of just other uncertainty, what can kept you going? Great question. In your darkest hour, when your life's full of uncertainty, what kept you going? And um, that's a great question. Um, first thing that comes to mind is Lance Armstrong's book. Um, I read it twice. I read it once when I got diagnosed, and then I read it again when I was in a, having a really rough day on chemo and just puking and sick. And I just picked it up, and by the end of that day, dukes were up. I was back on my feet again, ready to fight. Um, you reach out, you, you read about, you learn about inspirational people that motivate you, uh, people that overcome all obstacles. Um, but what also helped me was my family. You know, my mother was there every minute, every chemo, every surgery. I needed love around me. And even from those who really didn't get it all the way, you need people, you need energy, you're human, you need hugs, you need positivity. Um, one quick story I'll tell you real fast that made me laugh that I needed. Um, again, I had testicular cancer. My cousin's from California. 
sent me a package. And one day I was having a really awful day in chemo. And my mom comes in the room, look, your cousin sent you a package. And I said, oh, kind of came out of my chemo fog and was like, wow, this is awesome. I'm going to kind of get excited and open up this big box that they sent me. Open it up. It's a two-gallon plastic container of cashews. And I opened the note. I said, Johnny, heard you need some nuts. <laughs> and that's what you need. And you need that. That's what I that. time ago, if you're alive, no matter how bad you're beaten down, and I was beaten down, let me tell you, I know Sammy was too, it's rough, but you get through it, but you've got to find a way to laugh. You've got to find humor in everything you do. Um, you kind of ask the question, what's funny about this in every situation you're in? If we're alive, we should be able to find an answer for that question. Any more questions real quick? And I want to respect the other speakers. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. Jay's question is, how, how did it change me for the better? Great question. I had a ton of energy pre-cancer, before 26, but it was unchanneled and it was unfocused. And after cancer, this crack in the system was crystal clear. I'm like, why am I here in this clinic? And I ask my doctors and I ask my nurses, and they're great people. And I say, how, is there another young guy like me here that I can kind of compare notes with, who's a little ahead of me? And they scratch their heads, and they're good people, but no, I'm sorry, there's no one here like that today. And I'm thinking, when this thing's over, we're gonna fix that problem. And then you become focused, and you realize that all your energy needs to be channeled in one direction. And then you recruit survivors to join you, and you go from five to 25, to, to 1,025, to over 4,000 of us marching in the same direction. That's channeled. And um, I just give a lot of credit to our team, because our team makes this thing happen. But that's how it changed me. It showed me a path. And that path was important. And we've helped thousands of people. We have thousands more to help. Thanks for asking that. It's so really, really quick. I think we're probably out of town. We're probably out of town. For two seconds, um, Sammy Fields over here became an angel of us. I didn't even know he was going to be here tonight. He's a leukemia survivor, former professional hockey player. <laughs> Short. Sammy and I drove down to this kid's house together on a Sunday about four years ago. Uh, this is the wristband. Still wearing his bracelet right here. Yeah. This kid, Joey Allegretti, if anyone's ever heard of him, he was 13 years old, lives in Frankfurt, fighting leukemia, total athlete, expected to win state championships for middle school in wrestling. He's huge, bigger than we are. He was like 13 then. And passed. And we hooked Sammy up as the big brother, athlete to athlete, leukemia to leukemia, guy to guy, and the kid Joey fell in love with Sammy. He was like, you played professional hockey? Like, what was that like? And it was amazing. You want to say a couple words about it? Yeah, just, just like Johnny was talking, if you guys know Johnny's got a lot of energy, I hate to see if he's talking about it. he's got a lot of energy before cancer, I couldn't even deal with him. <laughs> but he, uh, I mean, you know, helping out, I mean, I, I was playing minor professional hockey, um, and uh, I just signed a deal with the NHL team, and two days later I was in the hospital fighting for my life. They gave me two weeks to live. Um, I spent six and a half months in the same room uh, going through chemo radiation. I didn't have the uh, opportunity of leaving the hospital. I was in uh, you know, the same room for six and a half months. Um, but like Johnny said, I didn't have anybody to tell me what I was gonna go through. I didn't, it's not even me, I don't care. Physical pain to me is minimal. It's the mental pain and, and the, the, the anguish that you go through, especially seeing my family there every day. And, you know, being able to talk to, to family and friends and, and to let them know what they're going to go through, it's, it's hell and back, I'll guarantee you that. But at least you can cope with them and tell them exactly what they're, they're in store for. And I didn't have that. And when I was done, after I beat it, my sister, actually they couldn't find me a donor, and my sister was a 6-6 six to six perfect match. And after two months fighting for my life, they flew me flew my sister in from LA and uh, she had just had twins and just got married and she didn't budge once and she gave me her stem cells which like he said if you look at it, it looks the stem cells look like a little bag of like mustard it's just a little plastic bag and I'm like I was looking at the doctor I said this is going to save me I said you're going to get it in the hospital man what the hell are you talking about <laughs> so to make a long story short is they did it and thir you know, I, I set the record at the University of Chicago 13 days later I was home and uh, you know, I spent a year and a half at the house, but 
you know, if I, if I didn't have my family and, and, and people next to me, you know, I wouldn't have been there. Then, at home, a week later, I'll make this short because I know I got to get up. I, uh, I was reading the newspaper in my parents on my parents' couch, and I read that I saw, you know, this goofball's face, and it said that, you know, Johnny Himmerman, he just started off his Himmerman Angels and his one-on-one uh, -on -one cancers, so I had to meet this guy wholeheartedly. He was at this nightclub called Stone Lotus. Never been there. <laughs> Never been there. <laughs> and they, they just, they had just opened up, and me and my buddy over there, Jess, and a couple other people, we went there, Joe, we went there, and I saw him, and he was wearing that same exact t-shirt, except it was like light blue. And I was, being an ex-professional hockey player, I wanted that shirt. He said, no, I'll send you one. I said, no, I, you don't, you're not understanding. I want that shirt. So I took off my button down, I made him strip down, and I took his shirt that night. We swapped shirts in the middle of our true but, story. But, it's a very true story, but just, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll end it at this. What he's doing for the cancer community and for the world is, is just unbelievable. And he's, he's probably one of the sweetest guys you'll ever meet. Horrible looking, but great guy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>